Hello, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. I'm going to do a video this evening talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. And this is actually take two. I got about 15, 20 minutes into this video a little while ago. And uh, this video is all about, uh, again, Pope Francis' his apostasy, the one world religion and government he's setting up right now. It's false teachings and the dangers of Pope Francis. And quite frankly, I believe I'm getting allergic to Pope Francis. So I had a pretty crazy sneezing fit and had to stop the video. So uh, <clears throat> this, is, this is take two. And the, the video today is going to be about the uh, global totalitarian government that is in the final stages of development. And uh, Pope Francis at the current time seems to be the one pulling all the strings to, to bring it bring it into into actual uh, the actual uh, play that it will be the one world government, the one world religion, ultimately a mark of the beast system. He seems to be the guy pulling all the strings right now, and unfortunately the the sheep are just kind of you know the the Laodiceans out there and and the Catholics who are blindly following the Pope as well as uh, all the other uh, world religions who seem to love this guy and the atheists are. They're applauding him, they're standing in line, loving what he's doing, and will willingly accept what he's going to be bringing in here, because they think it's going to bring peace. You know, Pope Francis, is. everybody talks about how Pope Francis is such a humble guy, and he's, you know, the, the world loves him. And as I get ready to do some of these news stories, I want to start real quickly with two verses out of Revelation chapter 18, verse 4 and 5. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive none of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. And if you are a practicing Catholic right now, or if you are just somebody who loves Pope Francis, thinks he's good for world peace, my, my, my prayer is that you will come out from among Mystery Babylon, the harlot, Pope Francis and the Vatican will be judged by God. You can see that in Revelation 17, 18, 17 and 18. But people are uh, they're loving this guy right now, and he's very, very dangerous. So a few days ago, he met with the head of Google, which is obviously is a international uh, web uh, uh, website, tech, you know, global technology. Uh, <laughs> And I've, I've reported on in the past how many articles you can find on the internet about Google and the RFID chip implant and how they want, they're working toward and wanting everybody to have an RFID chip implant. Pope Francis just met with them. Now today at the Vatican, Pope Francis meets with the IMF's Christine Lagarde. Pope Francis on Monday met in the Vatican with Christine Lagarde, the managing director of the International Monetary Fund. The two also met in the Vatican on the 10th of December, 2014. So it's the second meeting between the two of them that we know of. It says the International Monetary Fund was is composed of 188 countries, was established in 1944 to help manage a uh, country's balance of payments. According to its website, it is working to Foster global monetary cooperation. Secure financial stability. Facilitate international trade. Promote high employment and sustainable economic growth and reduce poverty around the world. <clears throat> well, again, 188 countries make up the International Monetary Fund. On April 22, 2016, 193 countries will meet to sign the United Nations uh, Sustainable Agenda 2030 Goals Agreement that they, they agreed on, uh, I believe, in September in Paris. Uh, they're going to they're gonna confirm it in, in uh, April. The United Nations Sustainable uh, Development Goals, these 2030 Agenda Goals, are based exactly on Pope Francis's encyclical on climate change. And if you read the goals of the International Monetary Fund, foster global monetary cooperation, uh, secure uh, financial stability, sustainable economic growth, 
and reduce poverty around the world. That is exactly the same goals and the same gospel that Pope Francis is preaching and the same goals and the same thing that the United Nations is pushing. But Pope Francis is the one behind the, not even behind the scenes, he's right out in front right now promoting all of this and pulling all the strings and he has the ears of the world leaders and he has the world practically worshiping him. Certainly a lot of Catholics are worshiping him as was evident when he came to the United States and we saw what happened in Washington, D.C. and New York and, and Philadelphia. All the while, while Pope Francis is declaring the cross of Christ a failure uh, and promoting his one world, ec uh, one world ec ecumenical movement, his, his, uh, inter his interfaith service that he did at the World Trade Center Memorial, uh, never ever standing up for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now he's meeting with the International Monetary Fund with the idea of setting up global monetary cooperation right after meeting with Google. Very interesting. What would be global monetary cooperation? Well, let's go to Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 and 17. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. To set up the mark of the beast system, you're going to need the internet. You're going to need uh, <clears throat> powerful internet sources like Google. It can help you set that up and manage it. And you're going to need the help of the International Monetary Fund. And it appears that Pope Francis is doing everything he can right now to help implement the Sustainable Development Global Government. It's time to wake up. He is a very, very dangerous man. Let's let's go on to the next story. It also kind of uh, makes me sick and shows you how dangerous this guy is. Uh, <clears throat> headline reads, uh, Pope Francis says obstinate Christians are rebels and idolaters. This is out of uh, Radio Vaticana. Um... This is just amazing, this article to me, actually. And, and, and by the way, uh, ironically enough, right under the headline where Pope Francis calls obstinate Christians uh, rebels and idolaters, there's a picture of Pope Francis standing in front of a statue of Mary, speaking of idolatry. But uh, let's move on here. Um, let's, first of all, let's look up what the word obstinate means. It means pig-headed uncompromising, stubborn, inflexible, unbending. Pope Francis says obstinate Christians are rebels and idolaters. He has a way of doing this. It's amazing. He's taking, throwing all the traditional Christians, all of the uh, fundamentalist Christians. Remember, Pope Francis has said that fundamental Christians have a sickness and they're dangerous. Pope Francis is working to stamp out all forms of extremism. He considers Christian fundamentalism a form of extremism, dangerous extremism. That's why he's working toward this one world government and one world religion of tolerance and a one world religion based on, uh, I'm not sure yet, I think uh, Mother Earth and the climate and and uh, taking care of the of the environment and the planet and the fact that we're all on the same path finding our own way to God. He said that last week, that even that all the religions are seeking the same God, just getting there a different way. Um, he's completely turned against uh, the truth of the real gospel. And now he's calling the people who believe in the truth of the real gospel rebels and idolaters when he's the actual rebel. And as I said, that's the message at the lukewarm uh, church and the and the unbelievers absolutely love, the secularists, they love Pope Francis. They love that false message. So let's look at some of this article. Uh, Pope Francis says, Christians who say it's always been done that way uh, and stop have hearts closed to the surprises of the Holy Spirit. They are idolaters and rebels will never arrive at the fullness of the truth. That was the message of Pope Francis at Mass on Monday morning. Um, the Pope, this the Pope emphasized was the sin of Saul. He goes on, I'm not going to get into the history of what Saul did, but um, he says, um, the sin, he said, is a closed heart and does not hear the voice of the Lord. He says, um, 
It is the sin of so many Christians who cling to what has always been done and who do not allow others to change. They end up with half a life, a life that is patched, mended, meaningless. Uh, it is the sin, he said, is a, is a, the sin is a closed heart that does not hear the voice of the Lord, that is not open to the newness of the Lord, to the spirit that always surprises us. This rebellion is the sin of divination, and obstinacy is the sin of idolatry. Uh, Christians who obstinately maintain it's always been done this way, this is the path, this is the street, they sin, the sin of divination. It's as if they went about get by guessing. What has been said and what doesn't change is what's important, what I hear. From myself and my closed heart, more than the word of the Lord. Obstinacy is also the sin of idolatry. The Christian who is obstinate sins. The sin of idolatry and what is the way, Father? Open the heart to the Holy Spirit. Discern what is the will of God. You know, he's, it's impossible to read what this guy says. It's amazing. This is another perfect example of Pope Francis talking in circles and saying nothing. But when you really look at what he said, what he said is completely against the word of God. And now he's telling you that if you believe that, if you don't accept his transformation of, of the church and the gospel, you are a rebel, you are an idolater, you are a sinner. If you will not allow me to come in here and preach things that are completely against the word of God and scripture, he's calling you the one in, in error. You're the sinner. You're the one that's wrong. If you're a fundamental Christian, you're the one standing in a way of global harmony and peace because you're too intolerant and fundamental beliefs are leading to religious wars and, and we cannot have that. We're all on the same path to God. Follow my apostate gospel. That's basically what he is saying. And that is very, very dangerous. And he has a way of using his office, his Supposed, supposedly being the vicar of Christ and on the throne of St. Peter. So the Catholics are, are following him blindly. He's in a very powerful, in fact, I would say he's the most powerful man on the earth right now. And really, I remind you, he's the one that Shimon Perez said is the only one on the earth powerful enough to end all wars. And Pope Francis is using his ecumenical movement as a, and his global environmental uh, and gospel of tolerance as a way to Make people believe that's the only way to come into world peace. Let's go to the scriptures because, again, he's talking about how you got to change and the surprises of the Holy Spirit and, and you're standing in the way if you have a closed heart um, and you're not going to fully reach the truth. Uh, and what, you know, again, some, this little phrase here caught my eye. Uh, he says, Christians who obstinately maintain it's always been done this way. This is the path. This is the street. They sin. The sin of divination. Well, let's stop off here in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 uh, through 15. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Pope Francis is a false prophet. And uh, comes to you in sheep's clothing in his all-white outfit, and nice and humble, peaceful gentleman, peaceful man, trying to bring on peace and harmony. And inwardly is a ravening wolf who is uh, bringing in the one world religion, one world government. Now, it says right here in the words of Jesus Christ himself that, that uh, wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and straight is the gate and narrow is the way. And Pope Francis right here is saying the Christians who maintain it's always been done this way. This is the path. This is the street. This is the gate, the narrow way. You're sinning. You're an idolater. You are not changing with the times and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you to the fullness of truth. And that is a lie straight from the pit of hell. Let's go to uh, Galatians chapter 1. Apostle Paul. Uh, Galatians chapter 1, 
verse 6 through 9. Because this is not something that's, that's happened just now. It's been even since the days of the apostles. But in the last days, obviously, it's getting much, much worse. Uh, uh, Galatians 1, 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you under the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. That, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that what then that ye have received, let him be accursed. Well, Pope Francis apparently is accursed. Because he is preaching a gospel absolutely completely opposite of Scripture, completely opposite of what Jesus taught, completely opposite of what Paul taught. And Paul warned us in Timothy, let's go to Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 4, Paul warned us about these times. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Telling the whole world that you're all on your own path to the same God, just getting there a different way. Even atheists can go to heaven. Telling the Jews you, at this point you, that you don't need Jesus for salvation. Speaking, giving, uh, departing from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils in the last days. Let's go to... Um, First, uh, Second Timothy, excuse me, Second Timothy, chapter four, uh, verse two to four. But again, Pope Francis always speaking against people who are steadfast in their doctrine and don't want to change, don't want to accept this new uh, evolved gospel, so to speak, fitting in with the times. Second Timothy, chapter four, verse two. Paul says, "Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove." rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. Pope Francis hates doctrine and people who stick to doctrine, but Pope Francis says, repute, or excuse me, but the Apostle Paul says, repute, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. They won't endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. That, uh, yeah, you know, if I was an atheist and Pope Francis told me that I could go to heaven, I'd love that. It's, it's just amazing how many people this guy is misleading. It's scary. We need, to, we need to pray that people will come to a knowledge of the truth, a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, while they still can. That is a very... Very dangerous doctrine, very dangerous article, and he's again he's he's basically throwing all the true believers under the bus and saying you guys are the sinners, you're the rebels, not me, you are, and it's time to wake up. Let's go on to some other stuff. Um, here's an interesting article out of um, National uh, Catholic Reporter. Headline reads: Pope Francis. A not-so-clear and present danger. Pope Francis, a not-so-clear and present danger. Unfortunately, though, this is written out of National Catholic Reporter, and they are actually uh, supporting what Pope Francis is saying, supporting the changes that Pope Francis is making when you read the whole article. But it, it says, Those who carry out vicious acts of terror in the name of the so-called Islamic State um, have become a major threat to our world. Every terrorist attack they and those whom they inspire inflict an unsuspect, on unsuspecting citizens serves to further disrupt our daily routines and ways of life. It says, but these misguided and depraved fanatics are not the greatest menace to life as we currently know it. There is a far more dangerous threat out there. It is Pope Francis. I couldn't agree more. This is out of the National Catholic Reporter. I couldn't agree more. Pope Francis is the most dangerous threat out there. Unfortunately, they're going to twist this around 
out of the out of the Catholic viewpoint of it, and talked about how Pope Francis is promoting dialogue with Christians around the world. He's changing the way things are looked at, changing church dogmas, uh, upsetting Christians who reject its dogmas. Uh, it says uh, every time the Pope condemns arms manufacturers and the weapons trade, he infuriates those, especially in the United States, including Catholics, who believe there is a lawful purpose for an individual gun possession at home and for massive military action around the globe. Um, so he does enrage the self-righteous when he rails against capital punishment and even against lifelong prison sentences. And it goes on and on um, and says, uh, here, it says, yes, mercy is far more dangerous weapon than terrorist bombs. Um, talking about how people who are set in their ways and don't like Pope Francis's message are very dangerous. They're standing in the way of mercy. Um, but again, here, what really, really caught my eye here was another, uh, here it is, false belief of Catholicism. Here's the statement. The church, as the universal sacrament of salvation, needs to take up this summons to mercy. The church needs to buy into Pope Francis's uh, message of mercy that he's giving, which is not that Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood for you, that you might have eternal life. That's not what Pope Francis is talking about when he's talking about mercy. What Pope Francis is talking about is, uh, is his apostate gospel, refugees and, and world uh, government and, and all of that. And But what really is sad to me is this is what the Catholic Church believes, that their church, Catholicism, is the universal sacrament of salvation. No, 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 no. The church is not a bureaucracy in Rome and the Vatican and sacraments and rituals and indulgences and all of this other stuff. The church is made up of the believers in Jesus Christ. It's not a bureaucracy, a state religion, it's not Rome. It's anybody who believes in Jesus Christ, who's been born again, who's turned to the gospel of Jesus, who believes the gospel of Jesus Christ, that if you read the New Testament, that Jesus died for your sin, shed his precious blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin, and Jesus was that perfect sacrifice. And faith alone in the finished work on the cross becoming a new creation through belief in Jesus Christ, allowing the Holy Spirit to regenerate you. That is salvation. Understanding that Jesus died and rose again and allowing the Holy Spirit to change you. That's, that is salvation. has nothing to do with church membership and being in authority, submitting to the authority of the Vatican. And so many Catholics believe you've got to be Catholic to be saved because it's the one true church of Jesus Christ. And that is absolutely, again, a lie from the pits of hell. And Satan has been very effective in creating false religions of works and, and false systems based on the papacy and, and things of that nature. And that's a heartbreaking statement right there. The church, as the universal sacrament of salvation, needs to take up the summons to mercy. No. No, we're living in the age of grace and the mercy, and the only mercy that can ever save you is God's grace by sending his son to shed his blood to die for you. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And praise God, Jesus was faithful enough to come down here and suffer for us and pay the price because we could never save ourselves. We can never be good enough, and there's no religious system that will ever allow you to be good enough to be saved. We are saved by grace through faith, not of works, not of yourselves, lest any man should boast. Um, uh, let's see here. There was another headline I wanted to read. Um, oh, here is just another example. Is Pope Francis alienating devout Catholics? Yes, he is. And he's, he's alienating and... and, and uh, Again, completely against any form of, of of Christian fundamentalism. That's why I say, if you consider yourself a devout Catholic who who uh, loves Jesus Christ, come out of her, that you, my people, that you be not partakers of her sin. Yes, there. I, I I'm sure that there are people who are Catholic who are saved because they believe in Jesus Christ and they put their faith in Him. 
But again, I don't know how many, and, uh, and if you're trusting Catholicism, you're not putting your faith in Jesus Christ. And I believe that there are a lot of people that uh, are going to be, uh, unfortunately, unpleasantly surprised. Uh, let's go back to Matthew chapter 7 again. Um, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that, have, he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. If you are not in a relationship with Jesus Christ through faith, he does not know you. Okay, do not put your trust in yourself, in religious doctrines and denominations. Finally, last headline. Princess and the Pope. Monaco's Charlene and husband meet the Pope. And uh, it basically goes on to talk about how Princess Charlene wore all white. Uh, let me just pull it up here real quick. Uh, so she met the Pope at the Vatican with her husband. And she wore all white, and uh, this is out of People magazine today. So Pope, uh, Pope Monaco Charlene and husband Prince Albert meet Pope Francis. It says um, on Monday at the Vatican, and it says it's the fourth visit to the small country for the wife of Monaco's monarch. Wearing all white, she's only one of seven people worldwide who are allowed to wear uh, the color to meet his holiness. Makes me sick. That they <laughs> Charlene, stunned in a collarless white coat and a cream dress pressed with a white, paired with a white lace head covering. Uh, it says, the six other women, women who hold the privilege of wearing white in the presence of the Pope are Queen Sophia of Spain, Queen Paola of Belgium, Grand Duchess Maria Theresa of Luxembourg, Queen uh, Mathilda of Belgium, Queen uh, Letizia of Spain, and Princess Marina of Naples. Uh, does that sound like a humble man to you? Pope Francis is so humble, but... Wow, there's seven women on the planet who have the right, the privilege, of wearing all white in his presence. That is sickening. Pope Francis is a man. He is not God. He does not represent God. He acts like he represents God. He's got Catholics convinced that he represents God. He does not represent God. He represents the coming one world government, headed up by Satan himself with his two... Uh, cohorts, the false prophet and the Antichrist, and all three, the unholy trinity, will end up in a lake of fire for eternity. It's that simple. And someone who ex expects world leaders to come and kiss his ring and bow down to him, and my goodness, don't wear all white around him. You're not, you're not uh, qualified to do that. You know, the Antichrist is going to enter the temple and declare himself to be God. Let's just go there real quick. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 3 and 4. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let no man deceive you, verse 3, by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Well, he is changing the entire concept of who and what God is right now. He already claims to be God by being the vicar of Christ in place of God on earth. It's not going to be such a stretch to see Pope Francis, who is uh, working right now diligently to try to get the Jews' respect and, and Jews' trust so that he can confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week enter the temple and declare himself to be God, Daniel 9.27 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And when you see things like, you know, Wow, somebody wore white in his presence, and there's only seven people that can do that. And these rural leaders bowing down to him, it's not such a stretch to see the possibility of Pope Francis entering a temple soon, declaring himself to be God. He is pushing the one-ruled religion, the one-ruled government at epic speed right now, 
and it's time to make sure you know you are saved. And salvation comes through Jesus Christ alone. That's why he died for you. He is the only source of salvation. He said it himself in John 14, 6. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. And Peter said, the supposed first pope, said in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. The Bible makes it clear that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So many unbelievers want to say that, you know, I don't want to worship. I wouldn't want to worship a God like your God who allows uh, sickness and suffering and pain and death and, you know, catastrophes uh, what a loving God you know why, why would you want us to follow a God like that because that God loves us so much that he sent his only son to suffer and die and pay the price for our sin I hear people say why why what's why why are we blamed for Adam's sin and my answer to you is, so you're saying you've lived a sinless life, and if, and if God wasn't blaming you for Adam's sin, you would be perfect, and you would be qualified to go to heaven? Of course not. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we deserve hell. We deserve death and hell. None of us have lived like we should have lived for God, and none of us can without the Holy Spirit indwelling us and empowering us and allowing us through sanctification, through the... Uh, you know, the changing of your heart to be able to follow him. But God loved us enough to do that. He didn't have to. And he will give you eternal life if you call out to him in faith. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath risen from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart... Man believeth unto righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I pray you will do so. We are running out of time and living in the very last days. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank you for your plan of salvation. We thank you that you are all-knowing and all-powerful, and that you are in control. Nothing ever surprises you. And that you love us even though we continue to reject you and sin against you. You still love us and your mercy and your grace still is, is available. Jesus still saves. We thank you for that. We thank you for the truth of your word and the simplicity of the gospel of grace through faith. I pray that you will encourage those who hear this message and use this message to bring the lost to salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless everyone.